Welcome to Junior and Senior High Devotions. Thanks so much for joining me. Today we are going to be talking a little bit more about our Lutheran World Relief personal care kits, but we are going to start off with our devotion for today and then have some reminders about those kits. We have so many kids coming in. Thank you so much for all of your involvement. And we'll go over this right at the end, but those kits, the last day for collection is going to be Palm Sunday. So if you're conducting a drive or collecting funds or going shopping, now is the time to be a little more active in this process. That's March 28th, Palm Sunday. Go ahead and bring them to church. You can also bring them at other times. We're always willing to make sure that we're here to get those kids too. So let me know if you need a different time to bring them, if office hours for the church or service times don't work for you. But we are continuing our devotions that are also provided by Lutheran World Relief. They're talking about Lent, a season of hope, and we've been talking about sensing hope. And today we're going to be talking a little bit about the sense of taste. And so we're going to be looking at the story of Ruth. Actually, the whole first chapter of Ruth is recommended. And again, the PDF for this Bible study is in the description of the video. So if you want to look at that whole PDF, there's lots of stuff to do. But as we're thinking about taste, you can think about simply your favorite meal. What does it feel like to eat? Who is with you? What was that experience of that meal like? And so we're going to look at a little bit of the first chapter of Ruth. You're invited to read the whole thing on your own, but I wanted to just share a couple verses with you and then we'll talk about a summary of this chapter as well. So here's from the first chapter of Ruth. We're gonna read the first section and then skip around a little bit. So here is Ruth chapter one, starting at verse one. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land and a certain man of Bethlehem and Judah went to live in the country of Moab he and his wife and two sons. The name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife, Naomi. The names of his two sons were Mahlon and Chihlion. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem in Judah. They went into the country of Moab and remained there. But Elimelech, the husband of Naomi, died, and she was left with her two sons. Though These two took Moabite wives. The name of one was Orpah, and the name of the other, Ruth. When they had lived there about ten years, both Mahlon and Chilion also died, so that the women, the woman was left without her two sons and her husband. So that's the first section of this first chapter of Ruth. We hear all about this family. They've left Bethlehem because there is a famine. And so we're talking about taste, but here we find that there are people who don't have what they need to eat, and so they have to go to another land. We're going to look at these next couple verses and then talk about why this has happened. Let's look at verse 16. But Ruth said, do not press me to leave you or to turn back from following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God my God. Where you die, I will, I will die. There will I be buried. May the Lord do thus and so to me and more as well if even death parts me from you. When Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more to her. So the two of them went on until they came to Bethlehem. And so we have this situation where these women have been left alone. Their spouses, their family has died. And one of the wives of those two sons chooses to go back to where uh, she was originally from to stay with her family. And then uh, Ruth chooses to go with Naomi, her mother-in-law. And so we see that Naomi and Ruth are going from place to place to find the right spot where they have what they need to eat. And that happens to people in our world sometimes. When there's famine, you must go to another place so that you are able to eat and have enough to be healthy. And so Naomi and Ruth, even though Naomi has given Ruth the option to go back to her family, to stay in another place, they choose to go to Bethlehem together. And so this book of Ruth, it begins with famine and death, 
but it also is about this story of two people who are loyal to one another and then they end up having a lot of good success. They work hard, they work together and are supported by each other, community and family. And so their story turns around. And so Ruth is so very loyal to Naomi and during the, jur the journey she um, comes to know God and this is Naomi's God that she takes on because she is from Moab and so there's a lot of transformation that goes on in this story too. And so there are uh, people who are famished in different ways we find out all the time. There are people literally going through famine where food is unavailable. There are people who experience hunger, like now because of the pandemic when jobs and all sorts of things were not how they were supposed to be and so people were left hungry. And then we see that there are famines of the soul sometimes too, where we don't have the right support, where we don't see God in our lives daily. And so we feel depleted and not getting that nourishment that we need in relationship with God and with each other. And so as you read this whole first chapter of the book of Ruth, and Ruth is actually not a very long book, so you might even wanna take some time to read this whole story to see what its conclusion is too we see that even though there are these times of famine, that we are able to have hope in God. And so we're thinking about that sense of taste. Um, and think about it when you're so very hungry, what a snack or a drink of water means to you. And as we're completing these personal care kits, these aren't food items, but Lutheran World Relief does help with food. Uh, but these are items that are just something that are so needed. Uh, they People would have a thirst for them, a hunger for them. But also remember that moment when you're hungry, when you haven't had what you need for a while, there's just this sense of hope in getting that first taste of something. And hopefully our personal care kits can be a sign of hope too for those who are receiving them that yes, things will get better. And through God, we have this great hope that we are God's children, beloved, and able to work together for the sake of one another. So check out more of Ruth chapter one if you'd like. Um, there's all sorts of great stuff. And like I said, in the whole book of Ruth, you might even wanna check that out. So right now, I'm going to say our ending prayer and then give a couple uh, reminders. So let's pray together. God of goodness and grace, we come to you hungry for your presence. We desire to know you more and to feel your love. We give thanks for friendships that sustain us and accompany us through life. Teach us to be friends who offer time, food, and compassion. Show us how to be the people who walk with others towards safety, healing, and hope. Teach us to extend our tables to welcome all to the feast on your word. We pray all this in the name of Jesus, the one we long for in this season of hope. And so again, as we are looking at Lent as a season of hope, we're making these personal care kits. We will finish up our collection on March 28th, Palm Sunday, and then we'll be sending out our kits to go be used in the world. In just a minute here, I'm gonna say goodbye, but I'm going to include a clip from a few weeks ago of with some reminders of what goes into our kits and then how to assemble it and to roll it. So you'll see me in a different outfit, but in this same space making that kit. And again, if you have any questions, what goes into the kits, how we are putting them together, go ahead and just let me know. I would love to help you out with this. So thanks so much for being here today and thanks for watching. Uh, you'll see the instructions here just if you need a reminder for assembling those kits. Have a great week. So we have our two bars of soap at the top. Remember it's two to three bars totaling eight to nine ounces. So uh, here we have two bars that total up to the correct amount. We have them here, they're still in their packaging. Then we have our toothbrush, one toothbrush, and you're gonna have that in its packaging. Then we have two things that you take out of the packaging, a comb, a nice sturdy one here, and then we have a set of nail clippers. They can have a file or it doesn't have to, so those are taken out of the packaging too. And then we're gonna put everything together here um, and take our towel that's already folded in half. Remember, some nice dark colors are preferred if you can. And then we take those uh, thirds and put the towel together here and then from the bottom, we're gonna take it and gather everything up 
and then roll it here nice and snug. So we'll have our kit rolled here together. Looks good. And then take a rubber band, a piece of ribbon or a piece of yarn, and we're gonna take it. And there we have one more kit made for Lutheran World Relief 